The SwitchBot Lock Pro and Keypad now mean that I can unlock my door right from the Apple Home app. And on my quest to find the perfect HomeKit lock, I'm glad to say this one is perfect. Almost. It's a smart lock that allows you to unlock your door in a lot of different ways. With the Lock Pro, you can turn the dial on the back manually to lock and unlock the door. Press the dial to toggle lock and unlock automatically. Use your existing keys as usual. Unlock your door through the SwitchBot app. Use the Apple Watch app to unlock. Set up an NFC tag to unlock your door. Set up the auto lock schedule to lock after a certain time. But then if you add on the SwitchBot hub, which connects your lock to the internet, you can now unlock remotely from anywhere you have internet access using the app, set up a schedule to auto lock and unlock, set up an automation to unlock when you get home based on location, integrate with your favorite assistant so you can just ask it to unlock your door, create a shortcut and pin it to your home screen for easy access, or pin that shortcut to your Apple Watch. Then if you add a SwitchBot keypad to the front of your door, you can set up a fingerprint to unlock the door, which can be permanent or timed, use a passcode to unlock the door, or give guests a timed or temporary one, or use an NFC card to tap on the keypad. All in all, I think it's fair to say that this is the most extensive list of options I've seen in a lock, and they all worked reliably in my testing. The one thing I wish I could use is a four digit passcode, but it requires six digits. But the use of the fingerprint reader means I don't typically need to even use a code anymore. The Lock Pro is the second generation of the SwitchBot smart locks. The biggest difference, instead of just pressing it onto the top of your existing deadbolt lock for a simple retrofit option and no tampering with hardware, you're now replacing the entire back of your deadbolt lock and replacing it with the SwitchBot lock. This means that you can use your existing key on the front. On the other side, the requirement is to remove and replace the back lock, and that does make it much more sturdy and secure, but it also means that a lot of people who were interested in the no tampering first generation might be less inclined to pick up this one. And if SwitchBot is moving to a solution that replaces part of the lock, why not just replace the whole thing, like every other smart lock out there? So it's clear that SwitchBot built this lock to be much more secure than the first model. Instead of a bunch of retrofit options and a lot of moving pieces to fit over your deadbolt, you now have a much simpler mechanism. Add a small dial to your existing lock, which fits perfectly into the SwitchBot lock. And it's not just the mechanism that's more pro, but so is the design. Looking much more polished than last year's model, the materials are way nicer than last generation, the dial is great with a button you can push to lock the door so you don't even need to turn it anymore, there's a rechargeable battery pack with a magnetic door on top, or you can just use batteries if you want. But all of that said, with the understanding that this thing is massive. This is the biggest turnoff to this device. The depth is 83.9 millimeters, meaning it is bigger than most smart locks out there that I've used and could very easily hit the wall when opening the door if you don't have a door stopper. The keypad hasn't changed since my last review. It's still a very low profile keypad with a wedge design that makes it easy to use. It is still my favorite design of all SwitchBot products. And from the responsive buttons to the fingerprint reader to the backlight, it all feels extremely polished. It does take CR123A batteries that are a bit of a disappointment considering the lock takes AA and lasts up to about two years depending on how much you're using this thing. It's very easy to install with just a peel and stick option to install in seconds or drill for a more secure option. Using the lock has some intelligent features built in. First, the fingerprint sensor holds up to 100 fingerprints all stored locally and the fingerprint reader is extremely fast in practice. The passcodes can be permanent, temporary, one-time, or emergency passcodes. And it also lets you add random digits to the front end or the back of the passcode so that if you're being watched, it's much more secure than typing your PIN. The NFC reader is also great with access that's faster than Apple Pay, and the lock button lets you lock with one touch. The lock and keypad together are a great pair, but as I said at the beginning, the hub is what makes this thing really excel. It connects your lock and your keypad to the network, and then you can add it to your assistant for shortcuts or voice access. You can also integrate it with the Apple Home app with SwitchBot's new Matter support. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, the lock is perfect, almost. Matter support is a significant feature for the SwitchBot lock, but the feature is still in beta, and that was made clear when I tried to add this lock into the Matter Hub, and it kept telling me that I needed to do a software update on Loop. Now, I did some troubleshooting, and after completely restoring the hub, it started working again. And since successfully setting it up, 
I haven't needed to do another restore, but it's just very clear that this is beta. The lock has Matter support, which means it can also integrate into the Apple Home app. And in my testing, Matter is a little slower than native support, but just long enough to notice a difference. There's also a slight delay in the lock status in the Apple Home app, especially when compared to using just the SwitchBot app, but it's not extremely long for a difference and certainly worth the convenience of Apple Home. Now, if you want the most secure option for the keypad, instead of just sticking it to the door, you're drilling. And the problem is you're drilling in areas that you wouldn't normally need to drill a hole for a keypad, as most of them are built in where you would have a traditional lock. For me, this meant putting it beside my door instead of dr drilling directly into it. So just be mindful of knowing where you're gonna put this thing and if it's gonna be there forever. And speaking of the keypad, I found that it took a lot of time from when it read the fingerprint to then unlocking the door. definitely longer than other locks that I've tried. It's not a huge deal breaker because it works reliably every time, but that slight delay between fingerprint and then unlock was slightly annoying each time I had to unlock the door. The size of the lock. This is a deal breaker for a lot of people and definitely won't work in all spaces. For me, it just meant cautiously opening the door as to not let it hit the wall, but for others with a very small space, this might not be a great fit for them. But overall, those are the small trade-offs for an extremely well-built smart lock with endless ways to unlock and lock your door. Okay, so back to the original question. Why choose this lock over another option? The original first-gen lock was clearly for those who didn't want to modify their lock, likely geared towards renters who, you know, maybe aren't allowed. But the second generation lock does require the removal of the back of your existing lock. So this lock is really for anybody who wants to keep the original key on the front of their deadbolt and even though there is some hardware to install, the installation is done in minutes and works with nearly any lock. The ability to unlock your door with fingerprints, the added compatibility with Home Assistance, and the integration with the Apple Home app through Matter support make it one of the best options that are out there for maximum compatibility. And you know, also future-proofing as more and more products move to Matter. Overall, I'm really happy with this lock as my primary lock. With this one item it's lacking being a slim profile, I would recommend this lock to anyone who has the space for it. I'm using this over my home key enabled Yale smart lock right now and would definitely recommend it with the companion fingerprint keypad for a quick unlocking solution.